young and do it all for the G. I gotta keep in mind that relatives of mine is trying to build like me. Sit down with G Connect, got a thing. Every moment got you tapping the mental and looking out for the key. As a young and do it all for the G. I gotta keep in mind that relatives of mine is trying to build like me. Sit down with G Connect, got a thing. Every moment got you tapping the mental and looking out for the key. What's good, y'all? This is King Tech TV, hanging with G Connect, where different generations have real conversations. Make sure you tap in. One love. Yo, it's your boy, Stefan, a.k.a. Roach Killer, tapping in with G Connect, you know, where different generations have real conversations. Tap in. Hanging with G Connect. I'm right here on G Connect, you know what I'm saying? Tapping in with G Connect. Hey, yo, 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 it's your boy, Mr. 16, tapping in with G Connect. With G Connect. This Chris Long tapping in with G Connect. This Talking Junk Network tapping in with G Connect. Tapping in with G Connect. My boy, G Connect. This is Brother Jay of the X-Time, chilling with G. Are you working on any new projects today? Yes, I am. Actually, I was in the studio a little bit ago, um, working on some stuff. Like I said, we were going to do an anthem album, me and JL. We had probably like 14 tracks in total, you know, at the end of the day. And they were all going to be anthem bangers, but instead I ended up, I'm divvying it up and I'm going to drop it just each month. I'm going to drop two each month until the New Year's. And then when New Year's starts, and that's when the album will hit, 2023. You, you already have a title for the album? Um, Not this one. No, not this album yet. Um, I've been thinking about it. It's possibly going to be called Reversatility, um, just to show different segments because each track is going to be something different. You know, it, it, I try to elevate each time I sit in the studio. I try to do something different where it catches them off guard. And they're like, okay, you know, they're expecting this from Fitted. But what I'm going to give them is the unexpected on every track. Is I'm going to give them something different, whether it be a certain type of a bridge or the way my schematics are, how my flows, you know, I'm popping in and out the pockets. I may slow it up. I may speed it up because, I mean, I can do multiple different ways. And that's just because I challenge myself every time, no matter what. So you've been you, so you've been doing it. You said since two thousand seven. Yeah, two thousand seven. Um, I, I did it for a while, and then I stopped for a couple of years. And my wife ended up finding one of my mixtapes that I had, a little CD mixtape I made, and she was like, "Who's this?" You know, and the car came home, and I was like, "That's me." She was like, "Nah, that's not you. That's some black guy." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, nah, that's me." So I had to go in the stew, you know, go pull up the files and show the stem files, show her everything, you know, from the jump. And she was like, oh, it is you. She's like, well, why'd you stop? I was like, I got a family to feed. I got, you know, priorities to take care of first. And she she really pushed me back into it. So if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I wouldn't be sitting in this interview right now with you, G. Like, that's just a hundred. Shout out to the lady. Oh, yes. Most depth every day. Play her part. She played her part. That's right. That's right. Being, being that you've been in the game for some time, you care to speak on how you've seen the change in the music business since 2007 to today? Yeah, it, it almost uh, reminds me of a roller coaster because, I mean, obviously the early 2000s, there was a lot of hits, a lot of radio hits that were playing, a lot of features that were just nice. And then slowly just, you know, deterred and started, you know, a lot of people just started doing mumble, but hard beats and everybody wanted to be a trapper when half of them ain't even, even been to a trap house. You know what I'm saying? They're making up all these stories and stuff. And it's like, I know damn well, 90% of y'all that I've seen rapping that I know I've never been to a trap house, you know? So it's just like seeing them, them try to like paint a picture, a falsification picture. To me, I'm a realist when it comes to this, to, to life period. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give it to you 100 because that's all I know. That's how I was raised. You know what I'm saying? So I'm the one that gives you the truth that hurts, but it's the honesty is what you need to hear. And uh, I just feel like it, it, it fell into a mumble and there really was, the art was gone. There was no true passion behind it. It was just screaming a bunch of things, making up a bunch of, you know, like I said, it was just a bunch of false. It wasn't anything. There was no real truth behind it. There was a few, you know what I'm saying? And then you got the underground artists that were really pushing. And that's when the underground, to me, I seemed like they really stepped their game up and they elevated. Now a lot of artists are coming out of that that people think are brand new, but they don't understand as artists how many years it really takes for us to progress to get to where we need to be. On average, it's 10 years, you know, so when people start to see and they're like, okay, now, oh, this guy's new. Like when J. Cole came out, everybody thought J. Cole was the hottest shit, you know? But I'm like, yo, if you listen to his mixtapes, I was like, they shit on just his few songs that he dropped. And they, he dropped them three, four years ago. And people had no clue. But I'm like, people don't just show up to the doorstep and be like, all right, I'm here. I'm famous. I'm ready to rock, you know? So 
to me, it's just that that hunger wasn't there. I didn't see, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel that energy in my songs that like that I would listen to. So I honestly, I would listen to a lot of older stuff, like the the early 90s rap, the 2000s rap, you know, the 80s stuff, because it just had that feel, that genuine feel of hip hop. Knowing what you know about the fitness, what advice would you give to the youth trying to get into it today? Never stop learning. Never stop learning. Never stop testing your limits. You know what I'm saying? You got to you gotta risk it for the biscuit. And I say that all the time because it's true. Um, in order for it to rise, it's got to cook. You got to take your time. You ain't going to make it to the top of the ladder. You can't jump to the top of a ladder. You got to take it one step at a time. And build a foundation. Make sure you got a discography. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, one of your songs may pop. And it may be out of nowhere, and then you ain't got nothing else to fall back on when they look, when they're trying to look, yeah, hey, what else you got? And you got nothing else to show for. You're going to be a one-hit wonder, or they're just going to look right past you. Try to buy out your rights. You know, make sure you have all your copyrights, too. That's a, a big thing, man, that a lot of people, these artists have, they don't understand. Get you a BMI, get you an ASCAP. You know, make sure all your lyrics, your, your music, your instrumentals, everything is properly paid for. And you have the rights to everything because if you don't have the rights, boy, it's it's over, game over for you. Especially if it pops off. Yeah. True that. True that. Yeah. Jewel. Jewel. That was a jewel right there. How do you feel about the violence that's plaguing this generation? <sighs> out of hand. It's out of hand, it's out of pocket. Um, I got a 15-year-old myself and a 10-year-old. So I know, you know, how to speak to them and how to raise them, which a lot of them don't have that, that structure. I coach basketball as well. So I coach my boy just like I coach my son. You know, I tell him, I was like, it's it's always going to be life first. I'm going to teach you life before I even teach you the sport because it's all about the respect. You know, and I feel like this generation has lost respect, um, especially with technology nowadays. Everybody just sits like this. With, you know, they got their phone in their hand. They got ear pods in their ears. They don't hear nothing, you know, and uh that's just, I really feel like that's the biggest thing. Honestly, the, the respect factor has been, you know, depleted in these kids nowadays and they just don't really care. And there's no true structure because like I said, they got these phones and they're constantly, I'm going to screen record you or I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Like they didn't get their ass whooped now, you know, like we did back in the day, like anything my mama could get a hold of, she's hit me with, you know, whatever she could get. She's like, Oh, I can reach this. I'm gonna hit you with that. You know, but she had three boys and she raised us right. You know what I'm saying? She, we we can, we turned out all right. You know, we still pushing. So I think that's what it is, man, that that loss of respect. That's great. What's, what's Fitted Santana's favorite album of all time and why? Favorite album of all time? It's probably going to be Jay-Z's The Black Album. Um, I just, from top to bottom, through and through, I don't know, because I see, see, I don't know, that's a tough question, because now you got me thinking, because even his Hard Knocks Volume 2 was actually one of my first CDs that I bought, I purchased with my own money, um, and I still listen to that CD, I still have that same exact CD from when I was a youngster, like, I still got that CD, it still plays, it may be three or four songs that don't play no more, because it got scratched, but, uh, of course, Always I'm thinking, it's, I, you know what, I'm thinking it's actually gonna have to be, yeah, Volume 2, Hard Knocks, Jay-Z's album, just through and through, hard. I mean, the storylines, everything was there from top to bottom. And I just felt a different energy. And it just made me write a lot. Like, that's when I really started getting into poetry, too, just listening to what he was saying. And I was like, okay, you know, just picking up little things here and there, you know, taking it, running it back. And I'm writing down lyrics, writing his lyrics down just so I can know it word for word. You know, like old school, when they would have it inside the CD. Open up the CD case, you got the fold that folds out nine times. You got credits, you got the lyrics. But they don't do that no more. Right. That, that's true. That's true. They don't even make CDs no more. Nah, they don't. And that's what's crazy. So I've been I've been on the verge slowly just collecting vinyls now because it's hard to get a hold of the CDs and stuff nowadays. So I'm like, I'm going to go to the vinyl days because I got a record player, too, that I picked up. So, you know, just to have that, just to have that old school structure. Original you know, sound. Yeah, exactly. The purity of it. You know, you dropping the needle on there and you, you hear it. Then it, then it plays, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. What's 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 your favorite movie of all time, and why? My favorite movie of all time is probably Cool Runners. Cool, cool Runners is my jam. 
uh, Cool Runnings and probably um, that was probably it. Cool Runnings, yeah, Cool Runnings and Hardball, probably the, the my top two that I pretty much watched probably about a hundred thousand times as a little jit, you know, growing up. It's just it's one of those movies. Cool Runnings is definitely one of the movies that is just good vibes all the way through. You know what I'm saying? But it also shows the fight and that never ending quit to go through and finish through the finish line. So to me, that played a big part in my ambition and my drive and my motive to keep pushing no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Even if you already lost, you know, keep pushing and walking through to show them, hey, I'm still here in the fight. You know what I'm saying? No matter how many times I'm getting knocked down, I'm going to keep pushing through. Because I've been told no many times in this industry, but I'm still here and I'm knocking doors down now. So hey, I'm back. Don't let them stop, bro. No. Okay, okay, what it do, folks? It's your boy, G2Bs. I like to thank you for watching and continue to watch and be like Alpha Beta, tell a friend, you know, because this is real conversation. Different generations having real conversations, man. Pass the word on. Thank you for watching. Continue to watch. Hey, man, with G2Bs.